uh, back in the day, there was a great flood and the whole world got flooded. And Nana Bijou, who is our trickster figure, um, was stranded along with all the creatures of the world and they were just kind of swimming around. Uh, and Nana Bijou uh, said to some of the creatures, I think there's earth down below. We just need to dive down to the bottom of the water and get um, some dirt and then we can make a new earth. He asked Beaver to dive down. Beaver dove down and was gone for days and finally arose and, and said, I can't get down there. There's, it's too deep. There's no way I can get down there. So then uh, Loon tried next and Loon was also gone, but even longer than Beaver this time. And Loon also came back up and said, I can't get anything. It's too deep. No one can do anything. Uh, and then Muskrat said, I'll try. And everyone was like, Muskrat, you can't do it. You're too weak. This is a job for like a real um, water animal. And Muskrat kept insisting, no, I want to try uh, to, to dive down and get it. So they're like, okay, fine. And so Muskrat dove down and was gone for even longer than everyone else to the point where all the creatures thought that Muskrat had died and was just never going to come back. And so they were starting to try to come up with a new plan of what to do since there's no earth for them to be on. They're just still stuck in the water. And then finally, Muscat arose from the water. And in some versions of the tale, he's dead. And in other versions, he's just unconscious. But his fist is curled up. And they uncurl the fist and find dirt um, within his fist. Uh, and so they take the earth, dirt and they put it on Turtle's back. And that is um, what then became North America or Turtle Island. Growing up, I listened to my mom tell me a lot of stories, specifically tribal stories. And that was the way that I consumed stories because I couldn't actually read until I was like 10 or 11 years old. Um, but I would always love stories even though I didn't like reading or books as a general concept just because I couldn't read myself. Um, but when I finally did learn to read, I like became obsessed. And within a couple years of learning how to read, I started to write then and I fell in love with the art practice. And I um, drew a lot of inspiration from the tribal stories I had grown up listening to my mom tell me. And I just said at that age I wanted to be a writer and I never looked back. Uh, the title is The Wendigo Within. Um, which the Wendigo is a mythological uh, creature in my tribe. It's a cannibal creature that's known for, uh, a winter cannibal that's known for enticing people to turn to cannibalism and betray their kinfolk. Yeah. Within my writing, I would say a lot of it deals with identity and also being mixed, um, which I do think is like a reflection and probably a way of me working through some of that myself. As well as um, a lot of my work lately has been dealing with like sexuality or just like femininity and like being in a female body and experiencing like sex and pleasure and that sort of thing. And I do think that's a direct um, correlation to the fact that I grew up Catholic and so that those things weren't really talked about and were kind of like shamed um, in a way. Not so much by my parents, but just but by the environment that I was existing in because I was going to Catholic school. So there was an element of you shouldn't be feeling like s sexual desires or pleasure, that sort of thing. And so I have found that um, be, in, indigeneity and sexuality are often like the two correlations, the two linked together, often featured within my work. My schedule has basically been I write in the morning and then I'm beating in the evenings. Mm -hmm. And so I have made probably about 12 pairs of earrings and I also beaded a baseball cap while I was here. Mm -hmm. For me, um, beadwork is really restoring. So I think writing is something I love to do, but it's very draining for me mentally and uh, emotionally, just because the majority of the time I write about really heavy topics. 
Um, and with beadwork, I feel like I'm restoring my mental health and I'm just creating something beautiful. And it's, um, I'm working in a style that has been part of like tribal traditions for a fairly long time. So it's like a very close connection to my people and the work that we have done. And my grandma used to do beadwork. Um, and so just, it feels like being home in a way. Hambage has really given me the ability to like just hone in and focus on just creative processes instead of being distracted by the outside world. I feel like I'm in a sanctuary, I'm safe, and I'm able to like deal with those things that are like close to home, but having that distance between my physical home has been helpful so that I'm not like completely emotionally draining myself while I'm working on the project. I'm Amber blazer Zella. I'm a Anishinaabe from White Earth Nation. I'm a writer and beadwork artist. Uh, I'm currently at the Hambidge Center in Georgia working on a novel.